Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be continuing our series of BMNG and automation, making a light utility vehicle. Now, uh, if I thought John Williams was in my head when I looked at the last one of these we made, oh my gosh, oh yeah. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to keep going with the idea here. We've learned a lot in this series so far. We've discovered that as the horsepower increases, um, with greater power becomes more accidents because of lack of responsibility on the driver's part, mostly me. So uh, we're going to take what we've learned and try to implement some of those changes into this new version of this vehicle. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, we're going to go get ourselves some treated steel here. Uh, this kind of give us a little bit of durability. Uh, we've been doing the Mod-Q for a while. I'm actually just going to keep up with that. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, going with the light truck on the flip side is going to give us a little extra weight. Man, that feels weird, but I actually want a little extra weight. Um, that's actually going to make it a little bit safer for us. It's something we're learning real quick here. Uh, swinging to this side, a couple different choices here. Obviously, corrosion-resistant steel is super-duper heavy. A light AHS steel, very lightweight. Um, I don't mind the actual durability here, so I'm going to grab that. Engine-wise, man, am I super tempted to do something other than what we've done this entire time. I'm not. Uh, back end, of course, we have a choice between a coil and a leaf. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any of this fancy stuff. I was very, very tempted to uh, kind of adopt a different system, but I'm going to keep going with these coils here. And then up front, our last generation actually had the double wishbone, which was really, really nice. The upside, downside to that was it wasn't great. So I'm actually going to go solid axle both sides, which, ah, that hurts. That really, really hurts. Now, engine-wise, I'm not going to lie, I was wicked tempted to actually keep the same engine we had from the 80s and just kind of update it a little bit because it's fantastic. It's a great engine. Honestly, it's overpowered, but I like it. But instead, we're going to be done. We're going to go ahead and create ourselves a new project here. Uh, this time, we're going to have to make an i5. And obviously, we have to keep something with the wind theme here. So uh, let's see here. I, uh, uh, um, Gale. There we go. We're going to call it the i5 Gale. Now, you're probably sitting here going, what are you doing? Why would you do that? You're silly. Um, because I can. So uh, we're going to grab ourselves a five-cylinder engine, which, what? Grab ourselves some aluminum. We're going to get ourselves a dual overhead cam. We're going to go with the four this time. This will make sense in a minute. And of course, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and adjust our capacity. Now, our cylinders got pretty big over the years. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Uh, it's going to be 80 by 100, which is kind of sort of our family size, if that makes sense, giving me a 2.5 liter engine. Uh, this thing's tiny, relatively speaking, compared to some of the other stuff we built. But this is what I want, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Coming over here, obviously, I want to do some, some really, really good stuff here. Lightweight forge, lightweight forge, and we're, of course, going to have a harmonic dampener. You kind of have to have one of these. Uh, the reason why, actually, I'm going to do balance shafts. It's going to be a little better here. Uh, the reason we have to have one of these is we're five cylinders, and that's just bizarre. Let's head on to the next page here. We're going to set our compression ratio at nine to one, which seems a little low. I know what I'm going to have to do here, so I'm going to get this process started already. Our BVL profile, we'll go ahead and jerk that up real high, but we want to peak torque that. Pretty low, actually. 6,800 is pretty epic there. And then, of course, we have our VVL RPM, which is a kind of little handy little doodad here. We can adjust this. This is when the VVL kicks in. I don't know when my VV will in... Let's try again. VVL will kick in, y'all, but I'm guessing about that. 6,500 RPM is pretty fair for this generation of an engine, but we don't know. Swing it over to this page. Skip for now. I'll be back. We're going to grab ourselves some fuel injection. Uh, direct injection is really, really nice, but again, I'm going to kind of keep within my theme here. Um, we're going to do performance mid. Again, keep it simple here. We're going to stick to the regular gas. So we're not going to do anything weird or anything like that. Coming over here, um, a couple different choices. I'm actually going to go with tubular again because I want something that's got some good performance. Uh, no bypass valves. That'd be hilarious. Uh, we'll stick with their three-way. Uh, we'll go ahead and do none, and we'll go ahead and uh, put a baffled um, off the back of this thing. So what do we get? So off, off the bat, we're not bad. We're actually really, really good. I'm actually kind of impressed with this engine already. We're looking at 190.9 horsepower, which is delightful. That's not bad. That's not bad. My goal is a little bit from about 250, 275. That's where we're going to end up. But we'll, we'll enjoy it while we can. And we can see your torque is about 203 and on the low end, it's about 147. That's not enough. Unfortunately, as we've learned from doing this a few times, that's just not going to cut it. Uh, we're going to need more torque. So let's start by optimizing everything that we have so far. You know, just kind of setting ourselves up with a little bit of wiggly room. We're going to need a bit, and you'll see why in a minute. Because like I said, we're going to do some turbocharging today. So I'm going to kind of set that all up. Oh, we'll get this a little bit bigger. Why did that make such a big difference? I, I cracked the thing open a little tiny bit. Now all of a sudden it's too much. That right, looks pretty good. And of course, then our exhaust gets all funky on us. Welcome to the iterative design process. Tell me, what is your iterative design process? It's like going around and around and never finding a place to stop. It's one of those kind of things. 
Swing it over on this side. Yeah, we'll go ahead and adjust the policy here. Valve can be improved. Does not surprise me in the slightest. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we're using VVL, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and do one of these kind of things to try to get it up a little bit. Now, this is going to look ugly. Ew. And we'll stick it right there. And then what we'll do is we'll take the VVL profile. And we'll do oh, too much, too much, too much. And we'll do one of those. And of course, we can adjust how aggressive the VVL is. Now, if you want to get epic here, watch this. <laughs> Now you're saying they're going, why are you doing that? Uh, the reason I'm doing that is this gives me a tremendous amount of overhead. You have that little hoo-hoo right there in the middle. Uh, that's a technical term, by the way, in case you've uh, not encountered that in engineering problems. And that looks pretty darn good. Um, originally was actually gonna go all turbocharger on this and I'm starting to get other ideas. I know that sounds strange. I'm, uh, oh, this is such a bad thing too. Uh, you know, let's do it. Oh, well, we're gonna put a turbocharger on it. Now, if you take a look, um, we've created all sorts of problems. Uh, for one, our horsepower has improved. Uh, we're at 340.8 horsepower right now, which is, um, <laughs> that's a bit much. Uh, the other problem we have, of course, is um, it, it, we have no horsepower in the universe. And it's like, boing, this is like a Ferrari F40, the racing version. It's, it's just hopeless here. So uh, we're going to have to play with this. So let's grab Eco first. I'm going to have pause. Oh, it actually came up pretty quick. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what happened here. Uh, still loading. Hang on, don't worry, I'll pause. Alrighty, that was fun. <laughs> I do love this program to death, but man, when it comes to engineering decisions, it gets a lot, a lot of variables. And to say it's a lot of variables is being very gentle here. Okay, so what happened? So I noticed here first that we're 151 torque, uh, which is pretty close. I really want 200. That's not enough for me. I actually need to play with this considerably to get this a little bit closer to where I want it to be. I'm actually going to zip over here and uh, go back over to my turbocharger. So the problem with turbochargers is they have to spin pretty fast before they actually start working usefully. Now, for those of you who have not seen the uh, turbo compressor map, let me go grab you one of these real fast. Uh, let's see here. Ah, here we are. So we can see right now that ideally we want to be somewhere in here. Uh, this is going to be the highest efficiency. It's also going to be the maximum speed. Uh, when we change the style of the turbocharger, naturally, this is going to shift. Now, if you're wondering why we have this little kind of thing sort of capped here, it's because of our limit on our boost here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and increase the boost. And you can see we immediately annihilate the connection, the connecting rods there. So um, increasing my boost limit uh, really didn't do much for me. And I created a critical situation where the turbine basically is going to self-destruct itself, which is pretty typical. Uh, welcome to designing turbochargers, by the way. It's, it, <laughs> it happens all the time. So um, obviously we also have a timing issue here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually, it's already 8.5, that's pretty low. Let me see if I can improve that a little bit on this side. So what we'll do is we'll add in a little bit of a fuel map. A lot of a fuel map, my apologies. Quite a bit of fuel map actually. And uh, we're gonna get a compressor warning here. That's okay, because like I said, we're still, we're still doing our thing. Let, it, let, let the magic work here. So what can we see? We ideally want this thing to be closer to where we're actually gonna use it. We want this to be further to the left which means we need the turbocharger to boost up sooner. Now, the thing you're going to notice here is if I adjust my compressor map, let me go ahead and it really fits with it. I'm going to jack, whoa! <laughs> it does not compute. What are you doing? Stop it. You are insane. Don't do that. As you can see, it does not like that very much. Uh, that's perfectly fine, though. Like I said, it's part of the fun, part of the fun. So our problem here is our sizes. Uh, we were just the wrong size for that. So you can see by a tick of my AR ratio, what I'm essentially doing is I'm pushing the compressor map left here. And you're gonna have issues. And it's, it's like I said, it's part of the fun. Don't, don't worry, it's part of the fun. But ideally what I'm trying to do is get the speed of this thing. I'm trying to get this over so that I can have a more efficient uh, box here. So I've actually popped over here right quick. You'll notice we get a huge boost of torque here, but our, still, our low torque is still 156. Now what some people actually will do is they'll go in here. Also notice I'm still knocking like crazy. So uh, if I need to improve that a little bit, I can bring down the compression ratio. That's usually the quickest and easiest way to do it. Uh, still knocking like crazy. Oh, I hate turbos. Uh, still knocking. Still knocking. I can uh, take the timing down myself a little tiny bit. Ugh. Welcome to uh, turbocharging, by the way. So um, obviously, we've got a little ways to go. Um, so we're going to have to experiment uh, quite a bit. That's nice. Oh, I can work with this. This is cool. So let's see here. So we definitely need to bring that down. Obviously, the size is kind of good. I'm not going to touch that. So um, what we can try to do is we can try to basically uh, shrink this down. Uh, obviously, if we have a smaller one, we're going to get better throttle response. So what we're going to do is that we're going to shrink this way to the left. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're worrying. I said don't worry. It's fine. This, this is all part of the fun. This is, this, this, is, this, is, this is what happens. So we're going to start with a very, very tiny turbo here. And 
Uh, like I said, we're going to try to get something that's a little bit tinier than uh, what you probably could expect here. I don't know why that's a lock to uh, that particular size. And we're just going to bring this up. So let's see, our AR compressor ratio trim. Um, let's see, earlier spool is definitely something that I want here. So we're going to have to fit with these numbers a little bit. Give me a minute. All right, so that was about 15 minutes of me fitting around with those settings just to realize that a turbo is just not the correct choice here. So I spent a couple more moments and uh, finished up my engine here. We got a 241 horsepower, which that's actually pretty good. That's not, not necessarily, it's a little shy of my goal. And yes, there's uh, nothing in the universe stopping me from going in here and starting to play the quality sliders. You know, give it just a little, little, I just, just, just need one, two more of these, and then I want two more of these kind of a thing. And you could definitely go in there, but 241 horsepower is... I think it's enough for this application. So let's go ahead and uh, give it a quick test. Ooh, that's smooth. Man, that's smooth. That's awesome. Uh, part of me, of course, is uh, just uh, having the little, uh, gotta engineer it better, gotta engineer it better. If we go straight through, no, no, no. If we go like this and we do it like this, then we optimize it. Choke the exhaust just a little bit more. 102, the header size. We just increase it just a little bit. Oh man, that is just not fair. <laughs> As you can see, we are just um uh maybe no, maybe a little rich, a little rich, a little bit extra fuel, maybe a little tiny bit of uh, timing. Now I'm just determined. Let's say maybe, maybe one of these. Uh uh, too much. Oh, Maybe that's not going to do anything for me. That's not going to do anything for me. I don't think this is going to do anything for me. 10.2 uh, is quite a compression. Of course, here's the joke. If you increase your rev limit, you get your 250. Oh, 296.6, man. 296.6. According to this, I still have a little bit of octane left. So let's just advance the timing. <gasps> Ding. Okay, I'm having... Fortunately, I've still got some underutilized octane here. So we can probably bring the fuel mapping down just a little bit. Advance. Decide. Advance, decide. Uh, let's see, 249.9, 250 on the nose, but I still have too much octane, as always. And we still have a little extra. Uh, 249, can I get a little, couple more, 250? Well, I'll see what happens. Let's go for broke here. Uh, that, that's pretty, that's some pretty serious uh, underutilized fuel octane there. I guess we can make the engine lean then? I just feel so wrong doing this. Again, it's because we opened up the exhaust, we got all this extra room to kind of work with here. Let's go ahead and I'll pull the mapping. Now we actually get some fuel economy. Yeah, I kind of want to leave it right where it was. Ah, this is exactly what happens. It's it, it's the cycle. The cycle of engineering must be completed. Now, the cool thing is, in the real world, you don't get all these tools to make our life a little easier. We did it. So now we're at 252 horsepower. I knew we could do it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was going to be possible. Uh, let's see here. 102. Uh, we'll leave it right there. It's perfectly fine. Can we go back to a three-way? Nope. That kills me too much. Huh? I'll take it. I will take it. 250.8. I like that. Sweet. So now we're 250 horsepower. I'm not going to bother running through the test again. I know that works. All right, cool. So that went better than expected. Let's get to this part now. So um, we have a little less power than we had in the 80s. And obviously we're a modern car with modern conveniences. So we'll kind of get to it. So there's one color I had in mind that I want to try to capture. I don't think I'm going to get this color correct because I'm just I'm not a good colorist in this regard. Also, it is so bright in here. It's like, I don't, I need a more desaturated. Like, that's the color I need. I just don't need it to be that uh, shiny there. So, whizz, one of those, if you really want to hurt your eyeballs, you crank that up to like 11 or something like that. But this one goes to 11. Uh, let's see here. So we have our pearlescent color. We're not doing that. We have our base color. I'm actually going to pull the saturation out. I want a little more faded. And I just wish there was a way to make it less like intense. There we go. Okay, good enough. And that color is called caladium. Nice, I guess. Cool. All right, swinging around. Let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves some uh, modern lights here. We have a couple different choices. We have these kind of round ones. I'm kind of curious. Do I get just the left one or do I get both? Oh, that is hideous. Unfortunately, I think it's even hideous for my standards. So unfortunately, we can't use that one. Uh, but we are in the 90s. We should have something to show for it. Like, you know, something nice. Like, let's do something like this. Ooh, that's a more modern look to it. I kind of like that. Let's uh, head down here. Actually, do they have one of those that also contains the indicator? Because that make my... Nope. <laughs> you wish. Let's go down here to uh, indicator here. Um, Again, this is where they always get nice and ugly for me. I don't get this indicator. That was just odd. Let's grab this one real quickly. We'll put that right there. Looks pretty good to me. Let's swing it around to the back. Grab ourselves a tail light. Uh, what am I thinking today? I'm thinking this one. And you're probably sitting there going, oh, you can't use that one. That one doesn't work. Oh, ha, ha. You have to think in three dimensions. 
I believe there's a great scene in uh, Star Trek, The Wrath of Khan there. He's very, very intelligent, but not experienced. You have to think of three dimensions with these things. Uh, there we go. Pop that one right there. And that's hideous. I love it. Let's see if I can get one of those little nasty little red lines you can put across the top there. Oh, yes. Let's make it really irritating. Oh, that's pain. I love it. All right, let's do the grill. So um, we've been kind of sticking to the same theme this whole time, and I'm looking through my different options here. Like we have kind of like a modernized look for a little while there, and it's, it's kind of tempting to jump back to that modernized look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one. I think I just saw one with the, the teeth. Okay. This is starting to look good. I'm, I'm definitely goofing up somewhere here. So I'm going to put it a little bit lower here. Looks pretty good. We have a little place for my little letter N as well. So I like that. Uh, we're a little more modern. Uh, we're, this is the 90s. So, you know, we have our good ourselves a little sunroof. You know, make it a little bit nicer. Nothing too, too excessive. Looks pretty good right there. Nothing crazy. Uh, downforce. Ha! Lip. Nope, 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 nope. Aha! Go ahead and throw on our little fuel cap in the back here. Looks pretty good. Handles. Eh, I'll go with this one, because why not? Oh, man, look at that. Look at that. That's, that's stylish right there. All right, let's get some, like, nice modern mirrors here. Oh, yeah, it looks like it came off a pickup truck. Oh, look at the size of them. They're huge. Okay, this is uh, looking pretty sweet here. I'm not going to play with this. This is so much fun to mess with, but, like, ah, uh, like, you can do things like this. Like, if you're one of those people, you can get all nice and sophisticated. And, and like, you actually do these things correctly instead of, like, maybe you use the I think system for everything. It's like, hey, Aaron, you can do one of those. And you have a little cutout for the exhaust if you want to stick it. I think we are a dual exhaust, though. So uh, whenever you have this problem, of course, you can shut me off and you can just have it on that side. Cool. So that's looking good. It's looking good. I'm not going to put like a little bump on the nose or something. It is very tempting. Uh, no. Uh, See, this is the slippery slope. Ah, uh, not going to do it. Not going to do it. I got tempted, though. Let's go ahead and throw in a modern aerial little antenna on the back so we can get at least some kind of radio. We'll probably put our cheap CD player in this thing just because. Uh, license plate. We'll go ahead and uh, make a little cutout for that, too. This is looking kind of nice. It feels a little more modern than some of the other things we've made so far. Again, this is getting outside of the utility vehicle. And this is just getting nice. So I like this one because it's got the little lights. I don't know. It's just, I find that kind of sort of lame and annoying at the same time. So got to use it. Oh, this one's difficult to work with, though. So if I put this right here, can I shift it? Yes, I can. Oh, nope, nope. Ew. Come on down. So I have to put it there? Uh, I don't think so. Let's see if I can shrink it down and kind of bring it down a little bit here. We're trying. We're trying. How about right here? here and i can't make it any bigger so this is the guy's uh, little uh you know kind of chin strap here kind of a thing going on oh well it is what it is let's go ahead and throw one in the back too oops of course instead of uh, throwing it on the back i've just placed it on the back i wanted to throw it on the back you fool you fool you've killed us all and now we get something that looks like this that's pretty pretty nice it looks basically kind of what i was hoping for here uh, I'd be very curious what happens once we start putting all the other stuff into it. Remember, we went a little heavier this time, so I'm hoping this works. So let's uh, get up to the 90s here. Uh, sports, classic, utility. I definitely want some utility here. Oh, we'll make it a little bit nicer. Man, those tires are huge. <laughs> Grab ourselves our exhaust tip. We'll go ahead and stick that. Remember how... Oh. <laughs> oh. Now we can stick our exhaust tip through. So I'll go ahead and grab that piece real quickly here. Go ahead and stick that uh, right there. Look at that. It was almost like I was supposed to do that. This time it doesn't mostly not go through things. So this is nice. This is like the nicest one we've made so far, I think, as far as just like, it's kind of like normal. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about things being kind of normal. And we end up with something that looks like this. Okay. I think we are onto something here. I feel like there needs to be like a little like the, uh, you know, what would they call it? The snorkel kind of hanging out of the side here. But uh, we won't. Okay, so we're going to go with all-wheel drive again. I know, I know, I shouldn't do that. The problem with all-wheel drive is it, 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 it's convenient, but it's obviously you don't have a lot of the selectability. We can't pop the thing into a low range or anything like that. But I'm confident that we'll have enough power to do that. So uh, coming down here, of course, so we have a couple different components we can opt for. I'm actually going to do an automatic locker, which is going to annoy a lot of people here. Sorry about that. And then my top speed, it says a 155. Uh, 155, that's really quick for something like that. I would not want to do that. Head over to this. We're going to do the same style we'd like to do every time. Those tires are gigantic. Let's bring them down a little bit. 215. We're a little heavier, so we got to remember that. Coming over here, um, modern times. It calls for modern brakes. We're going to go do one of those. We'll do 300 millimeter brakes in the front. Probably about 115, 110. We'll do uh, vented discs. Again, we're utility vehicles, so we have to keep that in mind as we're operating. Set that right there. Rear force is going to be, I don't know, 50, 60, 45, something like that. 
All right, we're going to stick with our off-road skid tray. That's going to make it a little bit nicer. There really are no other options that give you a better off-road performance other than that. Brake air flow, we're going to crank up. We're going to go head over here. Um, detachable hard top's fine with me. That looks good to me. Standard. We'll do, just do you know, basic CD. Nothing special. Like I said, trying to keep this simple here. Um, this does matter. Um, one of the things is I love electric steering. It's, I think it's just fantastic, and it makes it for very, very, very good drivability. I'm going to go with variable. Uh, this, and of course, so we have a couple new options here, including stability control. Now, stability control is really, really tempting, but I'm actually going to put traction control and ABS in instead. And the reason being is stability control will save for our uh, 2000s car, because I have a feeling it'll be nice. Standard 1990 safety. I like that. Um, of course, we always want to pick the one that's going to give us the best off-road capability. Actually, believe it or not, Active Comfort does a beautiful job of it. I think we'll save that for our 90s. We're going to do this. We're going to set it to off-road sway bars. We're going to do utility, and we're going to fix the six things we have to fix every time. It's just kind of one of those things. You're always going to have to do this. There we go. It looks pretty good to me. And let me guess. Front brake force. Oh, yeah. There's always a problem with the brakes. Welcome to this program, by the way. If you haven't done it before, um, you'll have that problem a million times. All right. Brake force issues. Oh. That is not what I expected at all. I expected that to be a little bit better. Um, let's give it a little bit better. A little bit better. A little bit better. Hey, nice. I like oh, Look at that. Wow. <laughs> cool. Nicely done. Nicely done. So if I look at my demographics here, you see utility sport, we're nailing utility sport, utility sport, utility off-road, 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 utility. Yeah, we got this. This is in the bag. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go take it over to the test track. I think we have like a minute 36 to beat or something like that. I don't think we're going to get it, but we'll try. We'll try. All right, a little slower. I expected that. We're 50 less horsepower. But again, we're hoping that we can finally get that balance between having a vehicle that's drivable and a vehicle that's utility, because you know how bad of a driver I am. So let's go ahead and export this sucker and go try it over in Beam NG. All right, and we're back. Let's do it. So the first things first, uh, we have the classic problem of uh, getting this thing connected. Oh my gosh, that's one downside with automatics. It's like, I gotta go, I gotta go. That's the sound it should make. It doesn't, but it should. Okay, here we are. We've got ourselves our Jeep, or whatever we want to call this, our general purpose vehicle, and all those kind of things, ready to rock. Let's take it for a ride off-road. So there's a couple different things that we want to look for here. We want to look for that general... That's different. Oh, hello then. Okay, that's different. So it's already a lot, much, much, much stiffer. Let's put it some brakes and see what happens. Okay, I think we might have a winner here. We'll go ahead and activate the uh, central differential. That's going to go ahead and give us uh, that nice locking force for all the drive mode. And let's take it for a spin. So we've uh, spun out a few times on this corner, and that's actually why I like this corner. This is a great introduction to, ooh, getting ourselves a uh, nice stuck. So we're off to a great start here. And I can see uh, we managed to get ourselves wedged into a tree because, you know, I'm like that. There we go. All fixed. Good thing this thing has a winch. Otherwise, we'd be in a lot of trouble. Let's try to climb inside here. Yeah, this is an all right view. I kind of like being able to see what the car is doing. So a couple things I'm noticing right away. So uh, first of all, this is probably the best suspension we've seen so far. Um, it's definitely a good mix between uh, responsive at the same time as it does dampen the pumps out a little bit better than some of the other things. Uh, we got a 600 kilo. I'm curious. Uh, performance wise, remember we actually have less horsepower than our previous generation, but it doesn't feel like it because it's doing a really, really good job of getting it onto the road. Uh, Weight-wise, I feel like we're better. Like the, um, honestly, I think it's a suspension that's really what's making this vessel or our vehicle here the best we've done so far. Because it it's, gives you a lot of confidence. Obviously, obviously, go right off the road for the 50th time here. But the uh, transmission, even though it is an automatic transmission, I think I lost something out back. Let's go take a look. All right, what did I break? <laughs> honestly, I could have driven like that for another 20 miles and not noticed it because this thing is so damn stable. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. The trick here is if you take it off and then you re-enable it, usually that's a good way to kind of fix it real quick. Hey, we're in. Cool. I like that. Continue. Yeah, so it's a, definitely a more stable vehicle in that regard. Oh, I'm in sport mode now. I didn't mean to go into sport mode. I'm in sport mode would be kind of silly. You could do that, but obviously without a uh, steering wheel or something. So, so well, we've had some trouble in this corner before also, but it's just... This is nice. Like, I don't... I mean, I feel like I'm, the trailer's driving me. I'm not driving the trailer. 
there's definitely some of that because we're not like a big, 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 big pickup truck or anything like that. But it's it's not bad. Honestly, this is the best we've done so far. It's a good amount of horsepower. Like, I have no issues. See how we do on this hill here. We've had some trouble in the past. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We're going to get stuck on those small rocks probably. Whoa! <laughs> Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, no problem getting started. So we've definitely achieved our objective of trying to make a vehicle that was um, a better balance. And like I said, uh, we'll be very curious to see how the knots are because, you know, the knots will get stability control and stuff like that. But this is legitimately nice. It's a good balance between performance at the same time as like, I can drive this. And again, you can see over there on the right, I'm doing about 66 miles an hour, which is plenty. Now I've hit the brakes here. Remember, the trailer doesn't have brakes on it. So um, it's going to start trailering me. And I feel like we might have damaged it. Trailer's still good. Look at that. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Yeah, this is definitely the winner so far. Uh, things for future generations. Uh, stability control uh, definitely would be something nice to have. Uh, one thing I'm kind of tempted to change is, I don't know about the differential. I'm really tempted to do a gear differential or do a clutch or especially electric differential when we get into the knots. But um, I, I don't know. This is, like I said, this is the nicest we've done so far as I go off the road with it. Let's see what we got here. And again, that's part it took us around perfectly. Look at that. I love that. I hate short trailers. I've said it before, and I, I, I still... Oh, I guess we're just going to go down the hill here. That's perfectly fine. So, as always, uh, we're going to see if we can get up the hill. Um, I'm pretty confident we're not going to get up, but I, I just feel like we just don't have the, the traction for it. But we're going to try. And here we go. Okay. Think high performance. Oh, no! No! Ah, <laughs> uh, no. It turns out our 1980s version was the one that could do the hill. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that is not good at all. Ah, I should have seen that coming. Wee! And of course, there's no way I can get this thing started on the hill. Because if I put this thing in like a manual one kind of a thing, everything's locked up right now. Let me go ahead and shut off the uh, stability control on this. I'm just going to try to see if I can just force it up the hill. I just don't have the gear low enough for this. Ah. Nope, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Oh, is that my load? <laughs> so unfortunately, uh, in my uh, fantastic efforts here, I never actually uh, reconnected to uh, my trailer here. Oh, boy. Woo, 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 woo. And yeah, I, I missed the little backup noises here. Come on. There we go. All right. So that didn't work. That's, I... I just, I knew I couldn't do it. It just, it does not have the torque needed, even now without a load. It just, it just cannot do it. It needs to dig much, 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 much harder than it did. And it just, it can't do that. I really, really need to bring back the LO range. So what I'm going to have to do is, and I hate to say it, in my knots version, we're going to have to go back to going to a traditional uh, four-wheel drive setup here. <sighs> then get the, like I said, everything's a learning experience. All-wheel drive is not the correct answer. I really needed that lower range. Oh, I could probably get away with all-wheel drive without, um, no, with a lower range. But um, I would, I'm sorry. If I had all-wheel drive with the range select, I could probably get away with it. But I think I'm going to have to go back to the old-fashioned one. So let's go ahead and give it the off-the-cliff test. Ooh! Oh, yes. Okay, then. Apparently I damaged one of my brakes. No! Let me try to break in the differential here. It drives! So it passes the off-the-cliff test. I am, I'm so happy with this vehicle. This is... <laughs> I'm still carrying the load. Look at it. <laughs> so um, somehow this thing still works. So it gives you an idea of uh, the durability of steel there. So I guess I guess I'm happy with that. And things everything went better than expected. All right, next time we're gonna go back to traditional systems for four-wheel drive, and we'll leave the power in and see what happens. Enjoy.